Steroids, also known as corticosteroids, are a man-made version of body chemicals known as hormones that naturally occur in your dog's body. Now, steroids are designed to act like these hormones to reduce inflammation. Now, steroids don't cure a condition, but they're extremely good at reducing acute and chronic inflammatory patterns, and they'll ease symptoms such as swelling, pain, and stiffness. Unfortunately, however, there are many negative side effects and issues around using these drugs, even over short periods of time. And steroids used longer term will definitely contribute to shortening a dog's lifespan and weakening their overall health. So are there any safe and effective alternatives? Let's take a look in today's short video. Lindell Pynchon, canine naturopath from Canine Vitality, and welcome to my channel, Happy Healthy Dogs, where it's my passion to help you help your dog live a longer, healthier life naturally. Thank you guys for being here today. I really appreciate your support. If you're new to the channel, uh, don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell to be notified of all my upcoming videos. Now, you know, there are certain times, guys, where using medications such as steroids can be essential and even life-saving. Now, this might be in the case of an acute autoimmune disease response or another acute inflammatory condition like a severe allergy reaction. But, you know, despite their benefits in such situations, they are definitely not without their problems. Now, steroids are known to cause a wide range of side effects. In the short term, and many of you might be familiar with uh, vomiting, diarrhea, increased hunger and thirst in your dog, increased potential to develop an infection and general poor energy levels. But in the longer term, the issues become far more problematic. Things like urinary tract infections, poor or thin hair coat, poor wound healing ability, obesity, muscle weakness, poor immune response, and the increased likelihood of developing hormonal issues like diabetes and Cushing's disease can develop from the ongoing or even intermittent use of steroid medications. And as these drugs are a suppressing medication, they don't resolve the problem, but merely act more like a band-aid to provide symptomatic relief. So, is there anything else we can do instead of relying on these drugs to treat any type of inflammation? Well, the answer to that is definitely yes. Sure, using natural supplements may not be quite as fast acting as those steroids, but in the long term, your dog will have a better chance of healing more completely without the concern of those nasty side effects. So today I'm gonna uh, share with you five of my top recommendations. So number one, Given that steroids are used to reduce inflammation, then we want to look at other ways, as I said, to do this naturally. Yes, I know that diet sounds a bit boring as my first recommendation, but honestly, guys, starting with an anti-inflammatory diet is one of the best ways that you can make a really good impact um, on any health issue where inflammation is concerned. Now, there is a difference between what's called pro-inflammatory foods such as processed foods that will increase inflammation and anti-inflammatory foods like your organic meats, veggies and good fats like omega-3 oils. So starting at that ground roots level and feeding your dog a diet based around anti-inflammatory foods uh, is really going to start to reduce down the inflammation uh, generally in any dog's body, reducing the needs for any of those uh, medications. Now leafy greens like kale, spinach and collard greens, wild caught salmon and oily fish hemp seeds and hemp seed oil, broccoli, bone broth, blueberries and fermented veggies. These are all great anti-inflammatory foods to focus on if your dog has chronic inflammation. Also, you want to look to eliminate any foods containing wheat and or gluten, um, and this is essential to want to avoid those drugs. Now, gluten's been linked to almost all inflammatory diseases, particularly those that affect your dog's brain. And it also is believed to be at the basis of many of those autoimmune diseases too. So avoid this, uh, you know, 100%. Number two is omega-3 fatty acids. Now, these are some of the most powerful natural anti-inflammatory oils to use with your pet to help reduce inflammation. 
Now you can look to use a fish oil supplement or hemp seed oil. Now the fatty acids in both these types of good fats have the ability to increase anti-inflammatory substances in the body. Hemp seed in particular is, it has extremely high levels of fatty acids and these can really switch down that inflammatory response. Now when using hemp seed oil, oil go with a quarter to one teaspoon a day depending on your dog's weight and go slow. Uh, for fish oil go 50 to 200 milligrams per kilo of body weight um, each day. Number th three is bromelain. Now this is a digestive enzyme derived from pineapple stems and as well as assisting as protein digestion, it's excellent sup an excellent supplement when it comes to swelling and inflammation. It can offer particularly good relief in the cases of joint inflammation and by adding quercetin to it, you can actually make this even more effective. Work on giving a dose of about 30 to 35 milligrams per kilo of body weight per day. Number four are herbs. Now, uh, turmeric, ginger, cat's claw, and uh, licorice are all excellent anti-inflammatory herbs, and I love all of these. Now, turmeric contains curcumin, which is a well-known anti-inflammatory for multiple types of inflammation, but other herbs such as ginger and cat's claw are also highly beneficial for reducing pain and swelling, as well as, of course, the inflammation. Now in the case of licorice root, this herb contains an active compound known as glycyrrhizin, which has a mild natural steroidal action. However, it's important to know that glycyrrhizin can cause an increase in the stress hormone cortisol, which may cause imbalances in your dog's fluid and electrolyte levels. So use this only short term for around two weeks at a time. If you are looking to use this herb longer, look for what's known as DGL licorice, which has that glycyrrhizin removed. So this is safe for long-term use as a really excellent anti-inflammatory herb. Now, if you'd like to find out more about using herbs, then feel free to contact me. I'll leave the details below so that you can learn a little bit more about that. And my fifth one today is zinc, which is an excellent anti-inflammatory nutrient to support your dog's um, body. It can really reduce a lot of inflammation markers. Uh, it's particularly helpful in older dogs where inflammation might be more severe and it can also reduce the risk of getting an infection by more than 60%. Now zinc supplementation can be particularly helpful where there's chronic skin disease or allergy states with inflammation. Look to give 2-3 to three milligrams of elemental zinc per kilo of body weight a day from zinc sulfate or gluconate. So guys, there are my um, top five recommendations. Of course, there are many other ways that we can reduce inflammation and other supplements as well. They're just uh, some of the ones that I tend to rely on quite regularly with my clients. Um, but if you'd like to learn a little bit more about any of those or want to find out more recommendations for anti-inflammatory supplements to help your dog, um, or even in terms of using those with or without steroids, then please feel free to reach out and contact me. As I said, all my details are in the description below. Now, it's really important too to remember that if your dog is currently on any steroid medication, do not take them off that uh, cold turkey. You must be uh, working with your vet in terms of uh, potentially reducing doses. doses. Um, so it, it's really important not to do that. Never ever stop and stop it. Uh, you know, as I said, cold turkey. Uh, if you'd like more help with that too, I can also assist you there. Guys, I hope you found this short video helpful. Um, if you did, please give it a thumbs up. I'd love to hear your story about your dog if you've got any issues or, as I said, if you need help. Um, and otherwise, guys, have a wonderful day and I look forward to catching up with you very soon in my next video. We'll talk soon. Bye for now.